This is a case of uh, 75 cc prostate uh, that I have done uh, a month ago. Um, so I've been using the continuous wave tilium yang, the first generation one, uh, since 2016, 2017. And I've been, uh, I've devised a way to use a low power and uh, low power of setting for this one. So I'm using a 30 uh, watt main. 30 watts for the setting uh, and then yeah I'm, I'm mainly using a combination of blunt dissection and uh, the and assist uh, and it's assisted by the laser uh, through the laser in coagulation and cutting cutting through uh, uh, sticky parts of the adenoma into the capsular plane so uh, my t technique involves uh, uh, both techniques of Professor Sancha, the earlier epical release, and the reverse way of doing uh, from what uh, Professor Scafone is doing uh, his inoculation. So uh, normally I would cut the 12 o'clock of the prostate. So yeah, so uh, make sure that you, you put in your markers very well that you won't uh, go into the sphincter. So I start with uh, an omega incision on the, on the at least a, a millimeter above the vera montanum, and this is a twelve o'clock incision uh, marker, and then connect it, connecting it, uh, the 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 posterior marker to the anterior marker, so releasing the mucosa of the the prostate of the urethra. So that uh, I get to be, you know, preserve the, the mucosa as, as explained by Professor Sancha in his early epical release, just to prevent uh, incontinence or to have the incontinence recover faster. So this is how I, I try to get the, the plane in between the prostate gland. So you always need a somewhat of a mechanical push to be able to get or uh, to to get into the plane between the the prostate and the capsule and then if i find it uh, a little bit uh, sticky or adherent to the capsule i would use the laser to cut through the prostate and i would cut through closer to the prostate uh, and not and not through the the capsule so I, i'd be focusing on on cutting the gland and uh, maybe just leave a little uh, behind and uh, just to prevent perforation so if we don't perforate we win right so so it's one thing that we well, one thing that i try to prevent doing so now i'm i have been releasing the, the anterior part and now i'm doing my incision at the 12 o'clock of the prostate and, and up to the bladder neck and then uh, once I'm able to get to the bladder neck, I'll, I, I release the upper part of the lateral lobe and then incising it, uh, the bladder neck, and then going down, uh, following the groove of the bladder, so up to the level of the bladder floor, which sometimes I call the equator. It's, the, it's where the, the prostate gland, the bladder neck, and the bladder floor would meet. Uh, and then after that, try to release release some more uh, from the from the lateral uh, the right lateral lobe, and then uh, and then if I'm able to release it already, I continue on uh, in the middle, the median lobe, uh, releasing a little bit of the the posterior, and then and then being able to uh, find the plane directly into the left left lateral lobe so this one I, I, I also do again another blunt dissection just to get into the right plane and then using the laser to cut through uh, the, the prostate and then release it from the anterior part and then from the mucosa as well of the of the of the urethra sphincter so again if you can notice, yes, there would be uh, charring, but it is less than uh, expected for a thulium, continuous wave thulium yang. So
So another blunt dissection sweep and then release and then release it using the laser. So this is quite uh, like a routine so I make the technique as, as uh, standard as I can repeating all the steps uh, regularly and without without missing any step so in, in turn this would help my fellows as well and my residents to understand how we, we should go about inoculation it's one technique or one tip or trick that we can do to be able to do the inoculation properly um, if we don't if we don't do this, if we keep changing, we don't focus on one technique, there's a probability that your learning curve would be slower because it would be harder for you to uh, understand and follow specific parts of your procedure. So this te technique is quite special because I can, uh, somewhat this is uh, like a template that I can use for, for when I need to do uh, an, an end block so basically my go-to technique would be an end block in, uh, inoculation and then uh, if I need to if it's too big and I cannot really push it into the bladder I would do uh, a two lobe technique or and if it's really a giant prostate that doesn't fit inside the bladder I would do, do a three lobe technique so anyway here I'm, 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 in, uh, I'm trying to free the lateral lobes so always going from the bottom to the top, trying to find a plane, the proper plane between the, the prostate gland and the, and the capsule. And now I'm doing the same as in the right lateral lobe. I'm trying to release the bladder neck and the prostate. And then going to the equator. And then using the laser to help me uh, cut through the, the, the adhesions where it's stuck between the capsule and the gland. So as along the way when I encounter bleed bleed bleeders, I would I would control it and then uh, and, and, and one of the keys in in doing a good uh, morselation, post uh, post inoculation morselation would be a clear view. So right now I'm I'm focusing on releasing the posterior part. So uh, we're at the median lobe already trying to release the sticky part and using some some blunt dissection uh, mechanical dissection uh, just to release the median lobe so it's mo mainly a sweeping motion uh, going left and right just to be able to release it and then however the 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 moment the movement should not be should not be uh, going forward it's mainly going up and forward so it's 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 diagonal yeah, you have to be able to imagine the shape of the prostate going into the bladder neck so you won't you won't be able to perforate or do uh, a sub trigonal perforation when when releasing the the, the median loop so when you're doing this uh, make sure you also your 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 laser not to uh, be too deep and you you should be able to see the tip of your laser fiber when you're doing the incision so this one uh, if you can see I, I'm, I'm trying to do both uh, blunt dissection and then assisting the, the prostate with the laser so that it will be released from the capsule so and in the, the direction of what I'm doing is always going up it's, it's slanting going up not just forward so so I can prevent any capsular perforation or, or try to be safe and avoid to undermine the tissue into the bladder so now this this move uh, usually I would I would cut through the near the bladder neck and then uh, always look at the corner which is more familiar and then incise with the laser the attachments of the median lobe so this would be this would be very easy and you can see the bladder floor behind behind the prostate tissue so that would be also your guide in doing the procedure so it's it's quite 
it's quite like a, a, a like a very good uh, video uh, to teach but it's not always like this you would we would also find some something that would be difficult to inoculate like uh, like giant prostates or or uh, sometimes we do have encounter uh, known uh, prostatic uh, uh, ca cancer cases uh, doing a thulium yan so uh, it would be less bleedy however the plane between the the prostate gland and the capsule is quite not that defined uh, there are parts that would be more defined compared to that of the prostate cancer but but all in all it would be difficult to find the right plane so you would be uh, trying to you would be trying to create or imagine or sculpt your way uh, and imagine the prostatic fossa when you're doing the, the procedure when doing the inoculation so for this case there's uh, we can see a little bit of a sticky sticky part of the prostate maybe caused by some infection or uh, inflammation so uh, trying to inoculate the nodule re uh, remove it from the from the tissue and you can see that part i was able to remove it and it, i find it difficult to take it out so i i just vaporized it and uh and so that it would not end up to the obstruction eventually if it if, if it will eventually grow so this one we're already near nearing the end of the procedure of the inoculation part uh, and then uh, you can see that the, there are only few attachments of the left lateral lobe and the median lobe into the, uh, into the capsule and then uh, we can see the familiar part that where it's attached and then use the laser to release this one and uh, the direction would always be going up never forward always going up slightly slanting forward but never going up so this one will will help you uh, uh, in, in doing this one tip that I can give you when you're doing when you're trying to release the, the posterior lobe of the prostate so yeah so yeah, we're almost there, uh, and and you can see that the charring would be different. I mean, less compared to the usual uh, when if you're gonna use the laser all throughout the procedure. So this one will help you have a like. Uh, I don't know if if uh, I forgot if there are publications that would tell us that the more charring, the more more um, uh, irritation the patient would get. Uh, however, uh, I think it's just more of a laser tissue inter interaction between the thulium and the holmium. So yeah, after that, once we release the, the gland, we try to control pinpoint uh, bleeders just to be able to have a clear view when you're doing the, the morselation. So uh, be careful not to uh, move your laser because this is a contact laser compared to that of the holmium so be careful not to like press in your laser into the tissue because you might perforate it definitely and go straight into the into the uh, uh, to organs that we don't want to perforate or incise so to check bleeders you, I would turn off on and off my my inflow to know where it's coming from because mainly if it's it's too much flow the the pressure uh, of that flow would prevent the small bleeders to show up so that's our sphincter okay so we're gonna start with morselation in a while um yeah so we're gonna change the 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 we will leave the outer sheath and change into um um, morselloscope okay. um, we're gonna use uh, uh, using jaws morselator from Hawk uh, it's, it's quite uh, okay uh, I, I think it's it's doing its job pretty well so yeah so it's very nice to see your inoculated prostate floating around inside the bladder and without without any bleeding so you just be uh, getting ready to 
do the morselation inserting the morselation so normally i would i would keep the bevel of the morselator blade up i know some would have uh would do an inverse but uh, i'm more comfortable uh, doing the the morselation in this way i think it's i feel like it's more logical however of course i know there are advantages of doing the the reverse but this one i'd be more comfortable doing so yeah so with regards to morselation uh, it's it's always just keeping your your bladder distended keeping the flow perfectly if you can have a double inflow that would be perfect uh turn off the outflow and then uh, make sure that you are are clear and you can see the two triangles between the blades that and, and that makes sure that your bladder is distended distended you can also ask your fellow or someone that's assisting you to double check the bladder uh, if it's fully distended uh, and then uh, of course there are times that you would encounter uh, prostatic glands so it would be hard to um, morselate uh, they are morselator resistant so usually I would uh, laser it or if it's really hard or not that big anymore and it fits the urethra I would I would uh, try to uh, use a grasper either a triprong or an alligator grasper to remove that tissue uh, uh, of, uh, of the prostate and then uh, extract it uh, through the urethra however in this case we are lucky that we are able to remove the whole thing without any problem and you can see how clear our our view is and we're not having any problems with with bleeding and we can continue and doing the morse later uh, without stopping so yeah so it's not always like this uh, sometimes you would encounter something like a problem uh, so just make sure that when you before you start the morselation make sure that your 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 flow or your view is very clear control your bleeders take time to do hemostasis and uh, you there will be no problem for sure so yeah so uh, after this I think I left the catheter for about a couple of days and then take it out and patient was happy uh, I think patient was immediately continent uh, there was no urinary incontinence and he was able to uh, freely void uh, after and was uh, happy um, with the outcome of the procedure uh, I think uh, inflation, regardless of the energy that we are using, maybe thulium, homium, TFL, or maybe even bipolar, it's it's okay. It's it doesn't really matter. The most important thing is that you can remove the most of the tissues uh, that you are able to remove. So, just like in 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 uh, open prostatectomy. So yeah. We're, we're good we don't have any problem and there's no bleeding so if there are no bleeding I usually take out the whole thing with the morcelloscope and just put in a catheter so yeah I guess we're good we don't have a problem with it anymore checking and yeah we're good and then we'll be we'll just put in a catheter for this one and we're good to go yeah thank you for listening and thank you for watching